Today was a really tough match. We stopped for the rain. Uh, <laughs> let me think about it. <laughs> um, I mean, as you've probably seen, I had absolutely no chance on the return. I was just uh, actually my, uh, you know, in the middle of second set, I was guessing all the time wrong. So I figured out I, another idea. I was looking at the shot clock and if, if the number was even I was going left, if the number was odd, I was, I was going right, so that was my tactics for the return. Very interesting, and... Okay. You stay and pick up this, thank you. Hey! Stefanos? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the mind game started already. I don't think too many were anticipating Nick Kyrgios to come out. Um, it's the most frustrating sport, I think. One, because you're on your own. There's no other really sport like it where you just, you, you're on an island, you're exposed, you can't you know, go to your team and have a sit down for 30 seconds and, and have anyone speak to you. Um, you know, you look at the best players in the world in their career and they've only won just over 50% of points. You look at Federer and Nadal, Djokovic, I think they've only won like 54 or 55% of points ever in their career, which is so frustrating. You're literally winning one of two points. And it's like so frustrating. Like imagine that. No matter how good you play, you lose one in every second point. It's frustrating. Do you play? Do you play it? Yeah. You don't find it frustrating? Yeah, of course. I also find it frustrating, but I'm not at your level. It only gets worse. <laughs> it only gets worse. It's it's tough to answer because I think it's tricky because in one way it's for sure confidence. You're number one in the world. Uh, I mean. It's uh, one of the dreams come true and you only want to, yeah, to try to continue keep it as long as possible, gain as many points as possible, uh, you know, yeah, just try to play better and show everybody that you deserve it. At the same time, it's a lot of pressure because as soon as you lose, everybody going to say, haha, world number one, lost, uh, blah, 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 a lot of talks like uh, we, we always have. So... It's tricky in both ways, but to be honest, when I come on the court, for me what matters is to try to win. Matteo, congratulations. What a turnaround that was. You really had to change the momentum, the energy. How did you do that? I don't know. Uh, um, thanks. You turn it. How much happier were you with your performance today than perhaps you were yesterday? First of all, congrats for the shirt. I really like oh. it. <laughs> um, and... We'll make it that time and... We've uh, entered into circus territory here. This is where he can end up switching back on. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Chilich seals it. I didn't watch what I do. I don't know. I don't know. You did well, now. Yeah, You're in a good run. <laughs> Entertaining exchange. You know, European players can play clay court season all year, all year round and finish like 70 in the world and they don't even have to leave Europe where an Australian player has to travel six, seven months a year and not see his family, not see his friends. And I play, I've played five events this year and I'm like 50 in the world and I have to travel. So if I had six grass court events in Australia, I would never leave the country. Like, I would never leave the country. Why would I leave the country? Like, I don't even know some of the people in the top 100. I, I'm being serious. Like, I, I don't know them. I know, but I, I genuinely don't know. Like, I'm seeing this guy who's like 70 in the world, and I don't know who he is. And how's that possible? And then I look at his, like, grass court record and hard court record, and he's won, like, two matches ever on those surfaces. And I'm like, how's that? how can you have people in the top 100 who can't play on two other surfaces? How's that, like... It just doesn't make sense. And this is not a shot at Kasparud, I'm just letting you know. Like, he's, like, it's not, because he's a gun. Like, he obviously fought on the French, whatever, but 
this is for like the other people who just live on clay like they just live on it obviously Casper final in Miami whatnot but you know. That first set was obviously very tight. Yep. Can you talk us through the second set a little bit? What happened there? Yeah, just bring a little bit more drama <laughs> into the match when, uh, when there, there wasn't any. So yeah, it was uh, obviously a little bit uh, tricky to close out the match. Made a couple errors and just gave Emil uh, a chance to come back. And you just said to the crowd that you're going to promise you're going to come back here next year. That's a quite an early commitment. Well, if they pay me well, I can do whatever they want. <laughs> No, but you love it here, don't you? Definitely, definitely. I do love it. Such a different week to, you know, all the other weeks on tour. Um, I'm having a ball here with my girlfriend and my, my team. It's quiet. Um, there's not much to do. There's a great restaurant I found. So you never know. Harley might be the one. What kind of food? I think it's just, it's, all, it's everything. Pastas. I don't eat meat, so beyond <laughs> meat. And you, you're also teaching your girlfriend to play tennis uh, yeah. this week, yeah? That's tough. Um, we're playing every day for an hour. I'm going to go, you know, shower and, and rest up and then we're probably going to go hit some tennis balls. Um, you know, she's improving. She's improving. She's going to try and play. I'm going to try and play mixed doubles with her at Australian Open. We'll see how it goes. Oh, OK. No, no, We'd love to do that. Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> there are only three men that currently play that have made it to a grass court final in three straight tournaments. You have done that. The others are Federer, Djokovic and Murray. You are an esteemed company on this surface, aren't you? Oh, um, I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> it feels nice. Obviously, I cannot even compare myself to those three players. They are unbelievable. They made a, the history of our sport, but for me, it's a pleasure to be here, to, to play, to enjoy, and to look at them and learn from them. So that's what I've been doing all my life, and hopefully one day I'm going to beat them as well. You are in that company already, don't worry Matteo. I don't mean this in a, in a mean way, but why haven't you won a match on grass before this week? To be honest, I don't like to play on grass and... <laughs> every year I find a way to skip the tournaments. Just coming to Wimbledon, losing first round and it's been the last 10 years like that, but... Maybe it will change, I, I don't know, I just... No, I, I start to like it actually, so let's see how it's gonna go. Heavy? Yeah, I forgot how heavy it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what does it mean to come here and defend this title? Uh, to be honest, I, I don't even know. Uh, it's too many emotions. Um, the last thing that I expected was coming back from a surgery, winning two titles in a row, defending my title here, one of the most prestigious tournaments that we have. So uh, I don't really know. Like, I don't want to cry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, it's. Most of the job is thanks to them, my team, my family, people that were close to me. A performance of tennis perfection. Hubert Hercatch is the champion in Halle, deservedly so, dismantling the world number one, Daniel Medvedev, with a devastating performance. His perfect record in finals persists. He can finally shave his beard off after winning the tournament. Yeah. So I'm going to get him a razor. <laughs> Yeah, so th thank you everyone one more time. It's, it's been a real pleasure. Try to lift it. <laughs> That's a good exercise. <laughs>